Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Nick Cosgrove and I'm back with this week's No Filter Q&A. This is the episode where I answer all questions related to diet, training, and supplementation that I've received over the last seven days from our in-house clients, online clients, as well as a few of our online followers. Remember, if you have any questions related to your nutritional plan, workout program, supplements you're taking, not taking, considering taking, please feel free to email me those questions at nick at foreverfitperformance.com or you can DM me your questions on my Instagram at fitcosgrove underscore. All right, let's get started with this week's no filter Q&A with question number one. Hi, Nick. How often should I change up my workouts to help shock my body? <laughs> you know, the whole ideology behind shocking the body, I think it's a marketing gimmick designed by personal trainers. You, you know, here's the thing. Why do you need to shock your body? If you're following a program that's working, why change it? Uh, you know, I I constantly hear people talking about, oh, I'm, I have to do a new program, new training split, constantly shock the body. And I'm like, for what? If something's not working, yes, take it out, put something else in. But if you know, for example, doing barbell back squats help you build bigger legs, why would you just take that exercise out for the sake of taking it out? You know it works for you, so don't take it out. So it, I think it's a marketing gimmick designed by a lot of personal trainers and online coaches to make you feel like you're getting more value for your dollar. So if you're working with a trainer who will constantly switch up your workout every time you come in, yeah, it keeps things fun, keeps things interesting, but really, is it going to allow you to actually progress and produce results with your physique and your health? Um, there's so many times, and I'll explain to my clients, like we're doing legs and we're going to follow the same routine for the next three to four weeks. Yeah, it might not be the most fun. It might not be the most entertaining, but you're paying me to get results, right? This is not a show. You're not coming to a show. I'm not here to entertain you. Um, I'm here to help you progress with your physique, your health, and your fitness, okay? Um, so whenever I work with someone, I try to find a formula that works for that individual. So if I find a workout program that is working for someone and I'm seeing that they're building muscle, they're losing fat, I don't make changes. It's the same thing with the diet plan. If the diet's working, it's working. Why change it? So we don't make changes for the sake of making changes. And I explain that to every single person I work with. You're still getting value in your dollar because you're going to get the results. And that's what you're paying for is the results, the end results. Okay. So I always tell people, if you want to have a, you know, a fun, entertaining, gimmicky workout, go look to work with a trainer that's offering to switch up and shock your body every time you come in the gym. But you're not going to progress. The only way to progress is to stay on track and commit to your workouts, commit to your diet and stay consistent. That's how you actually produce results with your health and your physique. So the whole idea behind shocking the body, I think it's bullshit. I don't think you need to change up your entire workout split. What you should be doing, especially if you're working out on your own, is paying close attention to the results you are achieving and are not achieving. So let's say, for example, you go into the gym and you're trying to develop your chest and you're a guy, you're trying to build up a bigger chest. Well, you know, you're, you're doing the same program for, let's say, six to eight weeks and you're not noticing any changes. Instead of changing the whole program, maybe just take out one or two exercises and substitute them with something else. If you were doing, let's say, a low incline barbell press for six to eight weeks and not noticing any changes, switch that up to a high incline dumbbell press. But don't change your whole program. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, don't, There's no reason to make a whole change because you won't know which exercises are working and which aren't if you just take out everything. So make little changes along the way and pay attention to your results. Okay. But remember, the only way you're going to produce results is if you're consistent with your workouts and your nutritional plan on a weekly basis. So if you're doing that same chest workout and you're just doing it sporadically every one or once or twice a month, of course, you're not going to notice results because you're not training consistently. But if you know you're in there week in, week in, week out, you're doing at least once a week doing that chest workout and you're not noticing results after two months, then I say, okay, let's change up the workout a little bit. Let's add in this exercise, take out this exercise. Let's maybe rotate your sequence, um, maybe change up your technique, maybe throw in some drop sets, some supersets, some circuit training. So it's not just when to shock the body, okay? You don't need to shock the body. Again, I think that's a marketing gimmick designed by personal trainers and online coaches that just wants to show you that you're getting value in the service that they are providing. But if you want true value in the service that a good coach and personal trainer is providing, look at the results you achieve. That's the value. All right, uh, next question. Uh, Nick, is bodybuilding an unhealthy sport? It can be. Uh, unfortunately, bodybuilding has got this stigma that it can be an unhealthy sport, especially with all the anabolic steroid usage. You know, you see a lot of guys, especially in the last five years, a lot of guys dying in their 20s and their 30s 
Um, and they're dying from heart attacks, right? You're having guys queuing over from aortic aneurysms. And these are guys who are in their late 20s, early 30s. So in that case, yeah, it can be an unhealthy sport. However, if you're doing it naturally, are you doing it on very minimal dosages? Are you, you're on anabolic steroid cycle, but you're rotating on and off. You're coming off, you're staying on, you're going off, you're going on. That's fine. You're getting your blood work done. That's fine. That's healthy. That's intelligent. But if you're just some guy who's going to the gym or woman and you're injecting anabolic steroids and you're not getting regular blood work done, that's stupid. So it's dangerous and it gives the sport a bad reputation. Okay. So in that case, it can be unhealthy. But if you're asking me for myself and for the people I work with, the people who are natural or even the people who are enhanced, but know to come off steroid cycles, it can be a very healthy sport. Okay. Because we know that the more muscle mass that you carry, the, the, um, the more healthy your body is going to be, right? The more muscle mass you carry, the more calories you burn in a rested state. The more calories you burn in a rested state, guess what? You're going to burn body fat. Body fat is not a good thing, right? So we want to get rid of that body fat. I mean, some body fat is good, but we don't want to be have excess body fat. So muscle uh, muscles also help us prevent from things like osteoarthritis, right? So there's so many benefits to weight training and bodybuilding as a whole. It, it's good for our heart right? It's good for our muscular system. It's good for not only our physical health, but our mental health. So I think bodybuilding can be a very healthy sport. Unfortunately, it's got that stigma due to the anabolic steroid usage from many, not all, but many people in our industry. And, you know, th that's the thing. There's always going to be a few people who push the envelope too much. And that's why we're seeing these deaths happen in guys in their 20s and early 30s, women too. So you have to be smart. As I said, I've been doing this for over 20 years. I've never had a serious injury. I've never had a health issue. Um, oh, I get my blood work done regularly and I feel great. So I think it can be a healthy sport, but at the same time, if you choose to make it an unhealthy sport, like anything in life, you can. If any, any sport can become unhealthy, right? <laughs> any sport, especially if you take it to the extreme levels. So you have to be smart. And I mentioned this last week on the channel. If you wanna last in this game, you have to be strategic. So you have to learn to listen to your body. You have to learn when to back off the weights, when to go heavy, when to increase your intensity, when to decrease your intensity, when to take a rest day, when not to take a rest day. And that's how you last. But the ones that don't last are usually the ones that want it quickly. They want the results quickly and they're, they're not going to train intelligently. They're not going to get their blood work done. They're not going to pay attention to uh, form, technique, nutrition, and those are the people that usually have problems. And unfortunately, that's is what gives the stigma that bodybuilding is an unhealthy sport. But for me personally, I think bodybuilding is one of the healthiest sports that you can do. All right, next question. Hi, Nick, is gluten-free pasta a good muscle building food? Listen, <laughs> here's the thing with gluten-free foods. Unless you're a true celiac, Okay, true celiac, which is about 3% of the population, which means you were born a celiac. Gluten-free this, gluten-free that is not necessarily a healthy food for you, okay? Uh, you know, like oatmeal, for example, regular oatmeal contains gluten. Now, if you are gluten intolerant, a celiac, you can get the non-gluten version, right? They have non-gluten oatmeal as well. But for myself, like I don't have a gluten allergy, so I can consume oatmeal, no problem. Here's the thing is there is a lot of gluten in our food, especially processed foods. And society today, we tend to eat a lot of processed foods. Now, this is why people are having trouble digesting their foods. It's not that it's necessarily the gluten. It's just that there's so much processed foods out there and there's so much more gluten in these foods than there was, let's say, 50, 60 years ago. So it's I don't want people to get under this belief that if something's gluten free, that's necessarily healthy because technically Oreo cookies can be gluten free right? It's not difficult. So you can't just assume because something is gluten-free that's healthy. Now, if you're asking me if it's a good muscle building food, I don't think pasta is a good muscle building food because pasta, whether it's gluten-free or not, contains loads of carbohydrates. And yes, even though the carbohydrates are complex for the amount per serving, it's way too much. Like when you look at like 25 grams of pasta, you're looking at 60 grams of carbs, Nobody eats 25 grams of pasta. Most people eat 50 to 75 grams of pasta. So you're looking at easily going over 100 grams of carbs or more for that one serving. So it's not a good muscle building food. A better muscle building food would be something simple like chicken and rice. 
You've got your protein, no carbs from the chicken, high protein. And if you're doing like a cup of brown rice, well, that's 40 grams of carbs max. You need about 35 grams. And it's it's more way more fiber in the brown rice than in the pasta. So it's, 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 it's a better complex carbohydrate source. So the micronutrients are better quality in brown rice versus pasta. So I do, would not recommend using that as a muscle building food. If you want to have it for a cheat meal, have it. Is the gluten-free option healthier than the non-gluten-free? Maybe a little bit, but, but it's not necessary unless you are truly a celiac. And if you are someone who is following a healthy nutritional plan, you don't have to worry about gluten, okay? Especially if you're not celiac. If you're not someone who has a gluten allergy, you don't have to worry about it because most healthy foods contain very low or no gluten. So you're okay. So it's for the people who consume tons of processed food, eat out all the time, they might develop a gluten intolerance over time, not become a true celiac, but they might develop a gluten intolerance just because of all the gluten that's in the foods they're consuming. Okay, but don't kid yourself and think that just because something is gluten free means that it's a healthier option, because it's not always the case. Okay, uh, Nick, what do you think about taking a baby aspirin every day to help prevent a heart attack? Good question. So for years, doctors used to tell people in order to help prevent a heart attack or stroke, you should take a baby aspirin a day. I had clients doing that on a daily basis because that's what they were told to do. Now the research has changed. So now what they're finding is taking a baby aspirin a day. And for those that don't know, a baby aspirin is a smaller version of a regular aspirin. Okay. So it's not designed for babies. Babies shouldn't be taking aspirin. This is a smaller aspirin, smaller um, milligram dosage. What they're finding now is that taking that aspirin every day can actually put you at risk for intestinal bleeding in the stomach tract, right? So it can cause bleeding within your stomach. So we don't want that. So now doctors are not recommending that people take baby aspirin to help prevent a heart attack or stroke, unless you've already had a heart attack or stroke. In that case, doctors will advise you to take that baby aspirin every day. So this is really a case dependent and something that you should be talking to your doctor about, because I don't know if you have any underlying heart issues, uh, high cholesterol issues or anything like that. So that's something you'd want to talk to your doctor, but I know the research has changed now. So if you've never had a heart attack, never had a stroke, but you're still taking baby aspirin, it's something you might want to rethink and talk to your doctor about. Okay. Because now, like I said, they're finding with recent studies, what's showing is it's causing bleeding within the intestinal tract in the stomach, in the stomach itself. So, it's not something that I ever did, but I have lots of clients that did who never had heart issues whatsoever. So I would say the research changed probably about two years ago on that. Um, so if you are taking a baby aspirin for preventative measures and you've never had a heart attack or stroke or have any issues with your heart, no heart disease or anything like that, you might want to talk to your doctor about maybe coming off that baby aspirin because it could cause more risk than harm. And if you have had a heart attack and stroke and have been advised to stay on the baby aspirin from your doctor, stay on it. Okay, because in your case, the advantages outweigh the risks. All right, uh, next question. Uh, hi, Nick. My weight went up seven pounds in one day. I did eat a few slices of pizza the night before I weighed myself, but could this cause such a high increase in weight? Uh, it absolutely could. And in some people, it causes more, especially women. Okay, so whenever you have a meal that is contains lots of sodium, pizza is a perfect example. Guess what's going to happen? Your body is going to retain fluid like a camel. So what happens when you have pizza, you're, you're going to be thirsty, right? The uh, pizza is very salty. It contains lots of sodium. So you're going to drink water. Every ounce of water that you drink, you're going to retain because you have all that sodium in your body. So it's going to, the sodium is going to make you retain that water like a sponge, right? You're going to swell up. Now you will eventually lose that water weight, but it takes anywhere from 24 to 48 hours to lose it. So a lot of my clients that work with me online and they hate when I ask them this, but whenever they have a cheat meal, I'll ask some of them, send me your weight the next day. And they hate that because they know their weight's going to go up seven pounds, like in your case, or even as high as like nine to 12 pounds. I have some female clients I work with and they'll tell you when they have a cheat meal, they'll easily go up by 12 pounds overnight. Um, and with women, it's usually a combination of the estrogen with the sodium, which is causing more water retention. Guys can get away with it a little bit easier because we don't have as high estrogen levels as women. We do have estrogen estrogen in our bodies, but not nearly as high as women, right? So we will retain some fluid as well. And I've had some guys that will retain like seven, eight pounds easily overnight, but it's water weight, okay? So it's not fat. Remember, there's 3,500 calories in a pound. So for you to put on seven pounds of fat in one day, what's with it? You'd have to consume like 24,000 calories, which 
pretty much is pretty impossible to do, right? I mean, some people could do it. I couldn't even do that though. And I have a fairly big appetite. So you can't put on seven pounds of fat within 24 hours. And even if you did consume those consume those 24,000 calories, your body is still burning those calories. So you'd have to consume even more than 24,000 calories. So it is water weight. Um, and if you're someone who follows a really clean diet, you're going to actually put on more weight because what happens, and I always use the analogy is, is if you have a really clean house and someone comes in and messes up that house, your house is now in disarray. It's the same thing for someone who follows a really clean diet. You're following a very clean diet. So your body is more sensitive to these foods like pizza, cake, burgers, fries, pasta. You know, whenever you go out to eat Italian food, all this stuff. It, so your, your body is just not used to that amount of sodium and it's going to soak up all that water. And like I said, your body will get rid of the water. So don't worry about it, but it feels uncomfortable, right? So that's why people who follow cleaner diets, they really notice it's almost like a food hangover the next day. They really notice it as opposed to someone who pretty much follows a shitty diet year round. They don't really notice it because they're honestly used to feeling like shit, right? Um, so that is normal. It's very common. And I guarantee you, if you weigh yourself three or four days after that initial weigh-in and you go back to your diet and you're following a diet that's dialed in, clean, nutritious, not too high in sodium, you will notice that your weight's gone back down. Okay. So I wouldn't panic about that. All right. Uh, next question. Uh, Nick, now that it's dark and colder outside, I find myself feeling a bit more depressed than usual and low on energy. Is there anything you can recommend I take that will help me? I always feel so tired lately. Um, yeah, you know, that's pretty common, especially in the winter months, right? We don't get as much sunlight in the winter. The days are shorter and it is colder outside, right? So, it's, you know, you're not spending as much time outside. Um, now, this is why I advise all clients, whether I see blood work or not, you should be supplementing with vitamin D year round, regardless of where you live. Okay. In my opinion, we do not get enough vitamin D from the sun. So for those people that take vitamin D for half the year and during the summer months say, I don't need it. I get enough from the sun. Not true. You don't. So I truly believe most people, not all people, but most people have a vitamin D deficiency, which is why I recommend supplementing with vitamin D daily, year round. Um, typically, I'll start my guys off with 2000 IU and women, I start off with 1000 IU. And I base that on, basically, I start them with that. But what I base it on moving up the supplement protocol is how they react. And don't forget with vitamin D, it can take anywhere from four to six weeks to really get into your system. So you have to stay consistent with it. So if I'm running, uh, let's say I'm working with a guy and I'm having him on 2000 IU for six weeks. And he's like, man, I'm still feeling low energy. I can kind of get depressed. I just, you know, I just, I have no energy. I'm, I'm lethargic all day. I'll say, well, let's bump your vitamin D up to 3000 IU. That will usually work. And same thing with women. I find if I bump them from 1000 to 2000, that will work. Um, you don't want to go too high on vitamin D. You have to be careful with your creatinine levels and your liver enzymes. But for the most part, 3000 IU for a guy would be about the limit I would go. And for women, about 2000 IU would be the limit. But I would start, if you're a woman, I'd start at 1000 IU, which is one pill a day. And if you're a guy, I'd start at 2000 IU, which is two pills a day. Keep it in your system for about six weeks and see if you notice any changes. The great thing about vitamin D, it's not a stimulant. So if you're sensitive to stimulants like caffeine or ephedrine, this doesn't have any effect on you whatsoever. So you should still be able to sleep no problem. However, I would recommend like with all your vitamins, unless prescribed differently from your doctor, take your vitamins first thing in the morning on an empty stomach, okay? Because um, a lot of people do have trouble digesting their vitamins and minerals. And so if you're taking them towards the end of the day, that can cause a disruption in your stomach, your stomach's breaking it down and that can make it difficult to sleep. So I usually advise most people to consume uh, their vitamins and, and minerals and supplements first thing in the morning, unless uh, prescribed differently from their doctor. Okay, next question. Uh, Nick, should I take creatine? <laughs> sure. Uh, again, it depends on what your goal is, okay? So here's the thing with creatine. It's probably one of the only, one of the few, I should say, over-the-counter supplements that actually work, okay? Um, and what creatine does is it fills your muscle bellies up with water. So if your muscle bellies are loaded with water, you're going to be stronger in the gym, which is going to allow you to put on a little bit, not a lot, but a little bit more muscle. Yes. Okay. It's going to allow your muscle bellies to be fuller, which may make, make your muscles look bigger. Okay. So it works in that case. It does. And creatine is cheap. Well, I mean, 
They used to be cheap. I don't know what it sells for now, but I always tell people, if you're going to buy creatine, don't spend more than 30 bucks for a jug of it because it's very cheap to make. It's, it's not it's not expensive at all. So if you're paying more than that, you're getting ripped off. Um, another thing, if you're going to take creatine, just take pure creatine monohydrate. Don't take the stuff that's added with sugar and flavors and all this stuff. Just take creatine monohydrate. Problem with creatine okay, is, and this is one of the reasons I don't take creatine, is because creatine allows those muscle bellies to retain additional fluid, you kind of look like you're holding water day long, all day long. So if you have your shirt off or you're at the beach or something, it just looks like you're retaining fluid. So you don't have that hard, dense look of the muscle belly. Now, for someone like me, I don't like that. I like to have that hard, lean look year round. So I don't want creatine. I noticed in the past when I was in my teenage years and I took it, I was stronger in the gym. But it's not like a miracle worker. You might add on three, four pounds of muscle. And you might add, and you add on another four to five pounds of water weight. So yeah, if you load creatine properly and you run it consistently for six to eight weeks, you'll probably notice an eight to 10 pound increase, but most of that weight is going to be water weight. And if you're lucky, you'll get two to three pounds of muscle. Okay. But again, you're going to be retaining that additional fluid. And when you come off the creatine, you're going to lose that fluid, which means you're going to lose that strength as well. You won't necessarily lose the muscle but you can't keep building the muscle over and over again. So you can't just come off, come on, come on, come off, come on, come off, come on, and keep thinking, well, if I keep cycling this, I'll keep adding on three pounds of muscle. It doesn't work like that. Creatine is not an anabolic steroid, okay? It's an over-the-counter supplement. So the reality is it's not gonna produce dramatic results. It might give you a little bit of results and it'll give you some strength in the gym for sure, but just be aware that that strength comes with a cost. And that cost is it's going to make you retain additional fluid, which most people don't really want that look, that puffy look. Most people I work with anyway. So this is why I don't really advise people to take creatine. It won't hurt you. I mean, creatine is relatively safe, but you don't need it. And so if you want to retain that, you know, that, that dense, hot, hard muscle belly look, don't take it. Because otherwise, it's just going to make like you look like you're retaining fluid year round. All right. Uh, next question. Hi, Nick. Could you please tell me how I can train with you online? I've tried Zoom workouts with two other trainers in the past, but they are not for me. Uh, yeah. So I don't do Zoom workouts myself personally. Uh, if you are interested in doing a Zoom workout, uh, our head trainer, Charlene, she actually does Zoom workouts and she does Zoom yoga sessions with people as well but I personally don't do them. Um, I think Zoom workouts can be beneficial, but I've just, honestly, I don't think I have the attention spend to do a Zoom workout with a client. I like to be either on the floor of a client or work with them on my online coaching app. And how it works with my online coaching app is you either DM me on my Instagram, fitcosgrove underscore, or you send me an email, nick at foreverfitperformance.com. Let me know that you're interested in working with me online and I will send you a basic questionnaire. And that questionnaire is going to allow me to design a customized training program um, created specifically for you, your goals, your lifestyle. Okay. Um, and then what I do is I ask you for photos or video of the gym that you are currently training at. So for example, I have a few clients that live in New Jersey right now. And so I, I don't, I don't live in New Jersey. I live in Vancouver, so I can't train them in, on, in, in my gym, right? And I can't train them in their gym. So what they do is they'll send me photos of the gym that they currently train at. So I see what they have access to. And then I put a program together for them based on not only their goals and their lifestyle, but also on what they have available at their gym. Because if they don't have a barbell back squat or, or barbell squat rack, sorry, I should say, at their gym, why would I give them a barbell back squat, right? So if you don't have a squat rack, I can't give you squats. I can't give you barbell squats. If you don't have a bench press, I can't give you bench press. So, you know, but if you have a hack squat machine, I can give you hack squats. So that's important. And what I do, I'll do is I'll create a program designed specifically for you, whether it's a three-day split, a five-day split, a four-day split, depending on how many days you know that you realistically can get into the gym. And then we'll go from there. We'll tailor the workout as you go. And I'll ask questions as the where each workout passes. How did this feel? Should we change this? We're not just gonna change the workout to shock the body. We're going to make changes accordingly based on the results you are achieving or not achieving. So you can work with me for four weeks, eight weeks, 12 weeks. But essentially what I do is I design a customized training program for you. Uh, the program uploads to your my online coaching app, which you can download on your mobile device or your computer. And you can just follow the workout as you go into the gym. So you go into the gym, you say it's leg day and you've got your leg workout set up, and you have barbell back squats, leg press, hack squat, walking lunges, leg extensions, line hamstring curls. 
if you're not sure on how to do one of those exercises, all you have to do is highlight the exercise on your program. And there's a video of me doing the exercise. So you have training tutorial videos included in the online coaching app. Okay. So that's if you want to work with me on your training program. And of course, I have another component with a nutritional plan, similar where I make changes on a weekly basis to the plan if needed, if not needed, we're not shocking the body, we leave it alone. Okay. So, and that's also a different component. So if you're interested in working with me either on your training program or nutritional plan, I do have an online coaching app. You can download it on the app store, Forever Fit Performance, and just DM me or send me an email and say you want to get started and I'll send you all the information we need. Uh, it takes me about 24 hours to put a program together for someone. So email me today and we can get started. All right. Uh, next question. Lost my spot. Oh, there we go. Uh, hi, Nick. How many calories should I be eating a day if I weigh 240 pounds and want to lose weight fast? I don't know. I don't count calories. I don't. Um, however, I can tell you that if you are counting calories to lose weight, you are going to lose a combination of muscle, water, and fat. And you're going to lose mostly water and muscle. Okay. Because if you're going to a caloric deficit, you will lose weight. Yes. But you want to make sure the weight you're losing is strictly body fat. You don't want to lose muscle and you don't want to lose water. Okay. So this is why calorie counting is ridiculous. What you should be doing is looking, focusing on your macronutrient intake, your carbohydrates, your proteins, and your fats. Now, body weight does help when implementing how much of carbs and proteins and fats you should start with as a baseline. But it's not the only factor that I take into consideration when designing a nutritional plan for someone, okay? It's one of many factors I take into consideration. So it's very difficult for me to answer this question because A, I don't work with you. And B, so I don't know if those 240 pounds is mostly fat right now, or maybe it's mostly muscle. Maybe you're someone who's been training year round and you just want to lose some additional body fat, or maybe you're brand new to the gym and most of that weight is body fat. So it will really depend on your body composition. So as I said, I wouldn't recommend calorie counting though, because calorie counting, you don't know what you're going to lose, <laughs> but I can tell you right now, it's going to be a combination of muscle, fat, and water, but you don't know how much of each you're going to lose. So that's why it's a slippery slope to follow. So if your goal is to lose body fat and preserve muscle, you need to focus on your macronutrients, not the calories. Okay. I promise you calorie counting, it works short term. You will lose weight, but you're not going to be happy with the weight you lose because as you start to lose muscle mass, guess what's going to happen? Your metabolism will slow down. You're going to burn less, fewer and fewer calories throughout the day because you're going to have less muscle. So it's going to be harder to lose body fat. Okay. You're also going to lose water. So water, as I mentioned, the creatine question, we do need some water in our body, right? And water allows us the, the muscle bellies to be full. If you go three or four days without drinking any water, well, first of all, you risk going to kidney failure. But second of all, you're going to notice a major decrease in strength in the gym because muscle is 80% water. So if you're losing water, guess what? You're going to lose strength in the gym. So this is why calorie counting is ridiculous. And this is why I don't advise anyone to do calorie counting, especially if you're doing resistance training. Okay. So focus on your macronutrients. Now, again, I can't tell you exactly how many macronutrients you should be consuming based on your weight alone. There are a few other factors that I need to take into consideration. But if you are interested in working with me and helping you get started, I do offer one-time customized nutritional plans. So you don't have to work with me for 6, 12, 18, 24 weeks. You can work with me in one shot and I'll, I'll put the program together for you based on the information that you provide me. Weight being one of them, lifestyle, how many times a week you're going to the gym, what your current diet plan looks like, what your current training program looks like if you're training at all. So these are factors that I take into consideration, what foods you can tolerate, which foods you can't, which foods you're allergic to, right? So this is, the, this is how I put together a customized plan. So again, if you'd like more information on my customized nutritional plans, email me at nick at foreverfitperformance.com or you can DM me on my Instagram at fitcosro underscore. And as a reminder, my online coaching app is available on the app store, Forever Fit Performance. All right, uh, last question. Yes, last question. Nick, did you, receive, did you read the article last week in the Globe and Mail about people who work with personal trainers versus people that don't? The study showed that people who have a trainer achieve significantly greater results. Do you think more articles like this will make more people go out and hire personal trainers? Uh, I didn't see the article. So if you can send it to me, okay, because I didn't see it. I don't really read the Globe and Mail. 
Um, now, that stat doesn't really shock me, <laughs> but do I think it'll make people hire more personal trainers? I would hope so, but not everyone can afford to work with a personal trainer, right? And that's why we have other options like small group classes, partner training, right? Small group training, right? So this is why personal training as a whole has become more affordable and more cost effective for people over the years uh, because one-on-one -on -one training can be very costly, right? But for those people that can afford it, it's highly recommended and highly advised because when you go into a workout with a trainer, a knowledgeable, experienced, and reputable personal trainer, that trainer is going to take you through a customized workout designed specifically for you. Uh, another great thing is you don't have to, you can kind of put yourself on autopilot when you go into the gym. So yes, you have to focus on what you're doing. You have to focus on pro uh, practicing proper form and technique, but your trainer is going to put together the program. So you just have to go in and do it. You still have to do the work, but you don't have to think, okay, which exercise is next? What should I follow this exercise up with? What day am I on today? Am I training chest? Am I training back? Am I training legs? Do I have to wait for this piece of equipment because I'm training in a commercial gym? None of that. If you're working with a personal trainer in a private training facility, you don't have to wait for anything. Then that's why people pay more. Like when people come to work with me at our, our facility in downtown Vancouver, British Columbia, or our location in Burnaby Brentwood Mall, they know that they're going to be in a private training facility. They're not going to have to wait for anything. The workout is already set up for them. So yes, you pay for that service, but you're also getting more bang for your buck and you're getting more out of that hour in the gym than you would on your own. Because if you're training on your own in a commercial gym, chances are that you're going to have to wait for something or chances are you might get distracted on your phone. And that's one thing I have all my clients do in the gym. I don't say they can't go on their phone, but I always tell them, look, we've got 48 sets, 52 sets to get in 60 minutes. If you have time to scroll through Instagram and play on TikTok, we're not going to get those sets in. So we got to get down to business. And I would say the majority of my clients who work with me in-house, they never pull out their phone. And these are people who own companies and have staff of 50 to 100 employees. And they can separate that one hour of not being on their phone and just focusing in on the workout that I had designed for them. So it doesn't surprise me that people experience better results with a personal trainer, especially if that trainer is reputable, knowledgeable, and experienced. So it's not shocking. Do I think it's going to force people to go out and hire more trainers? No, um, it should, but it probably won't. But it'll at least put it in people's thoughts that personal trainers are not a waste of money. Okay. Um, they can be very beneficial. And I mean, all you have to do is Google our company, Forever Fit Performance, and look at our reviews. Right. And these are from real people who have achieved real results from working with myself or one of our trainers. And we haven't paid these people. We haven't offered them any incentives. We've asked them, you know, if you if you like the, the results you've achieved, the experience you've achieved with working with us, please write us a review. And they do because they, they see the value in it. And I said, I've had clients work with me for 20 plus years now. And it's because they see the value in having a trainer versus doing it on their own. OK, it's like if your car breaks down and you're not a mechanic, are you going to try to fix it yourself? Probably not. You send it to the professional, right? So same thing with your body. If you want to fix up your body, build up your body, should you do it yourself? If this is not your forte and you don't know much about basic human anatomy and physiology, why not work with the professional, especially if you can afford it, right? It's all about working smarter, not harder. Like don't waste your time. Work with someone who can take you there, the results in a more quicker and effective and safer manner than doing it on your own. Okay. And that's like anything in life. That's why I'm a true believer. If I want to sell uh, my condo, I'm going to hire a real estate agent. I'm going to work with a lawyer. I'm not going to do it myself. Yeah, the reality is I probably could do it myself, but I probably wouldn't do it nearly as effective as working with an agent and a lawyer that can help me get the best price I possibly can for my house. So this is why you hire a professional. And this is why you do your research to make sure the professional you're hiring is experienced, is reputable, and is knowledgeable comes with loads of reviews, tons of testimonials, okay? Don't just hire someone blindly and hope for the best. But yeah, that doesn't shock me. Working with a trainer absolutely will get you greater results than doing it on your own. Anyway, that's it for this week's No Filter Q&A. This episode will be going up on Thursday, December the 14th. Unless I can get it up on Wednesday, December the 13th. I'm a little behind on these Q&As this week. This has been a crazy week for us at the gym, especially with the holiday season coming up. We have a lot of people going away over the next two weeks. So everyone's trying to cram their workouts in. So I've been pulling out 12, 14-hour days on the gym floor. So who knows? Maybe it'll go up on the 13th. Maybe it'll go up on the 14th. But it will go up on one of those days. 
As a reminder, if you have any questions related to your nutritional plan, workout program, supplements you're taking, not taking, considering taking, please feel free to email me those questions at nick at foreverfitperformance.com or you can DM me your questions on my Instagram at fitcosgrove underscore. Thank you all for watching. Thank you for supporting my channel. Have a safe and happy holiday season and I will see you all next week. Bye for now.